Hi, this is Rob Waller from Business Loan Services and welcome to my Friday Business Finance Bulletin, a weekly roundup of news tips, ideas and strategies on raising finance and dealing with banks. Well, if you're watching this video as opposed to listening on the podcast version, you'll see I'm on location this week. I'm actually in the Cardiff Business School and um, I've just finished delivering the second of three um, guest lectures uh, to the International MBA programme on business planning what goes into a great business plan and also the next session we'll be delivering next week is all about what investors look for and what banks look for. So it's been a great session here today. I've just finished it, hence the empty hall, and I thought I would do today's video from here. So what have I got to share with you today? Well, we're looking at angel investors, we're going to be looking at the rise of crowdfunding and what they did in 2014. And in my business tip of the week, obviously we're talking about business planning today, so I thought I'd bring you a tip about that as well. So, angel investors, a growing source of alternative finance for many businesses. But what are angel investors? Well, as the name suggests, perhaps you know, these are people who come down floating from the heaven with bags of money ready to come and save your business or help you grow your business. Um, and you know, what are these angel investors? What do they look like? You know, what type of people are they? Well, this is the question that's been asked by the Centre for Entrepreneurs and the UK Business Angels Association. So they've recently done a survey amongst angel investors on their database just to find out who they are. Now, interestingly, three quarters of them are aged 55 and below. And 44% of them are actually aged 45 and below. So we see that many angel investors are actually now coming from um, you know, the middle age thing. They not only bring money, but because of the middle age, they've got experience. And that's one of the key things that many investors look for. It's not just the cash. They look for somebody who has the skill that they don't have. They may see a gap around the boardroom table as regards finance, marketing, strategy, production, operations, whatever it may be. So just bear in mind, if you're looking to expand your business, yes, you may need money, but also look for those angel investors who can also, uh, uh, say, plug a skill gap that you have within the business. So if you want to know more about angel investors, um, just go and look for the British Angels Association um, and just Google around for investor groups, angel investor groups where people have got together to club together to go and find out suitable businesses in which to invest. It's a great way of actually growing your business and filling skill gaps. Now what about the other sources of finance? Crowdfunding and peer-to-peer, -peer, um, as you know, I'm a great fan of it. Well, the Peer-to-Peer -peer Finance Association has just come out with a summary of 2014 and just shows that that sector is beginning to continue to gather pace. And its members um, lent out approximately £1.2 billion in 2014. And now that brings the total amount of money lent out by the sector to just over £2 billion in the four or five years or so that it's been in existence. Now, in the grand scheme of things, compared to what banks are doing, you know, it's not a huge amount of money, but it's just growing exponentially. And certainly with the clients that we're talking about when it comes to raising finance, we are seeing a greater level of awareness. So it just shows that there are businesses now out there borrowing from this source. But what about alternative, there's our traditional sources of finance. Well, the, um, the EY Item Club um, have come up with a survey this week that shows that they reckon that over the next three years or so, by 2018, the banks will be back in the game. And they're talking about an additional um, increase in net lending by banks of about 66 billion over the next couple of years. And that's about a 17% increase on where banks are at the moment. So they think that the banks are going to start coming back into the market. But do you know what? I think, I think the nature of the landscape has changed. We're going to see a lot more partnering. And if you remember from last week's bulletin, we've already seen an example of Royal Bank of Scotland partnering up with Funding Circle and also Assets Capital to now say that any businesses that they can't help with, they are going to be forwarding on to Funding Circle and Assets Capital. So we're really seeing, say, a change in the way that businesses are going to finance themselves going forward, which, to be honest with you, is not a bad thing. We had too many eggs in one basket prior to the credit crunch, and that's what made it so painful. And now we've got a more diverse spread of money from crowdfunding and traditional sources of finance and also angel investors as well. All very good. Now, what about if you've got a deal of a lifetime on the table in order to buy a premises, but you can't move quick enough? Well, this is where bridging finance comes in. Um, news out this week from Cambridge and Counties Bank uh, that they have now entered the bridging loan market. So if you want to buy residential property or a commercial property, but your lender can't move quick enough, then you can get hold of a bridging loan. 
Um, so what they're doing for residential properties, they will lend up to 70% on um, of the asking price. Um, on the commercial side, they will go up to about 60% on um, of the value of the premises. Um, they'll go up to uh, 1.5 million pounds with a starting uh, facility of 100,000 pounds, an interest rate, um, but starting from 0.95% and a maximum term of 12 months. So they're not a cheap form of finance by any means, but certainly competitive on that deal compared to the marketplace. But what it allows you to do is to make sure that you can secure that property that you've always wanted and you can move very quickly. So if you want to know more about what Cambridge Accountants can offer, just hunt out their website and see um, exactly what the terms that they can offer um, for you. Now, tip of the week. Well, as I mentioned, today I've been uh, talking to um, MBA students on the International MBA programme here in Cardiff Business School. I'm talking about business planning. And it's quite um, opportune. There was a survey out from Barclays Bank um, earlier this week about business planning. And they found out that 47% of businesses have a plan. Now, I'm not quite sure about that, I have to say. Um, I don't think that stat is quite representative, certainly, of the businesses that I see. Um, and I think there's a lot more that businesses can do on the planning front. And you know, one of the reasons why businesses don't plan is because they think that it's going to be a complicated, long process. But it doesn't have to be. And I just want to remind you about the importance of having perhaps a one-page business plan. If you go into a bank for finance, they will want to see the all-singing, all-dancing plan. But you don't have to produce something the size of war and peace if you're not borrowing money. You can have a simple one-page plan. So what goes on the one-page plan? Very simple. Answer to two questions. Where do we want to be? Where do we want to be? There, you're putting your very specific goals down about your turnover, your profit, your number of staff, the number of premises you want, the number of products you want, whatever your definition of success is, you answer that question. Where do we want to be in 12 months' time or two years' time, whatever your time frame is? Your next question is, well, what actions do we need to take in order to get there? And there you're very specific about the things you need to do on a daily, weekly, monthly basis in order to get to that point where you want. And there is your one-page business plan, where we want to be, what do we need to do in order to get there. And you make that a living document within your business that you review regularly to ensure that you are actually taking action. And I know that will work really well in your business just to have a document that keeps you on track and focused. So that's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed the video as ever. And please do feel to share it amongst your colleagues and your friends. So that's it. Have a great, successful and profitable week. And I look forward to being with you again next Friday, sharing more tips and ideas on raising finance and dealing with banks. Bye-bye now.